Hello, welcome to Storybook Day. My name is Ian from the Storybook core team, and I'm here to talk to you today about some performance improvements that we've made in 7.0. The Storybook project began seven years ago, when the front-end ecosystem looked drastically different than it does today. It's been growing and evolving to meet the needs of today's developers, but it also does its best to continue supporting older paradigms and tooling. This naturally adds some extra heft to the code base that it likely wouldn't have if it were a brand new project today. Not only has Storybook been around a while, it's also used quite a lot. It just recently broke 5 million NPM downloads per week, and with 77,000 GitHub stars, it's ranked number 57 highest of all time. One of the reasons it's so popular is Storybook is a general tool for working with components. It's not tied to any specific framework. And now, with the addition of pluggable builders and Vite as a first-class citizen in Storybook 7.0, it does not depend solely on Webpack either. And for all of those different kinds of projects, Storybook has features like automatic docs generation, custom docs with MDX, a component testing system, and an add-on ecosystem that adds even more features. It takes a lot of code to do all of these things and to maintain such wide support. And over time, the technology we use under the hood naturally stagnates, is deprecated, or it gets replaced, leading some to say that Storybook is slow and bloated. And in some ways, they were right. So in 7.0, we set out to change this, and I think you'll be impressed with the results. For this release, we focused on a few ways we could improve the developer experience of Storybook by slimming things down. A smaller installation means you're up and running faster and your CI can get going quicker, giving you a more rapid feedback loop. We want Storybook to open up right away so you can jump right into developing, documenting, and testing your components. And if you're just getting started with Storybook, we want that process of getting it set up to be simple and straightforward. We've made big strides in each of these areas in 7.0, so let's dig in a little deeper and see what changes have been made and what effects they've had. Node modules can take a long time to download, especially for users who don't have the fastest internet. We wanted to be mindful of that, and so we spent time cleaning up our dependencies and ensuring that only what is really necessary is included. Let's compare how a new installation of Storebook 7.0 in some common types of projects compares in size against the same projects with the previous version of Storybook 6.5. First up is a Create React app project, which uses Webpack version 5. But Storybook 6.5 defaulted to installing Webpack 4. So unless you explicitly set up Storybook with the optional Webpack 5 packages, you'd end up with lots of extra node modules. Now, Storybook 7 ships Webpack 5 out of the box, which dramatically cuts the number of total dependencies that it needs to install into the project and reduces the resulting size of node modules by a fifth. Okay, but what about in a Vite based project? Well, in a React Vite app, we also see a drastic reduction in the total number of dependencies and an even higher drop in the file size, cutting out nearly a third of the weight. But you might be thinking, sure, but those are both React projects and you said Storybook supports all kinds of projects. Well, all right, let's take a look at another common type of project, Vue 3 using Vite. Here too, the number of dependencies is cut in half compared to Storybook 6.5, and again, we have a more than 20% smaller node modules footprint. That's a lot of time saved waiting around for NPM to install. But what if you're not using NPM? What if you care a lot about the performance of your package manager, and you're not satisfied with either Yarn or NPM? What if you're using something else? Something like PNPM. It stands for Performant NPM, and it works a bit differently than other package managers. Now, I won't go into the details here, but Storybook didn't always have the best support for PNPM, especially in Vite projects. I made it a personal mission to improve our PNPM support, partly because I want to use it myself, and the whole team worked hard to make the whole thing seamless. In 7.0, Storybook will automatically use PNPM to install your dependencies, if it detects a PNPM lock file, and is supported without resorting to workarounds like hoisting or installing lots of internal storybook dependencies. Using PNPM can improve your installation times in some scenarios, and it's becoming increasingly popular, so it's worth checking out if you're not already using it. 
So what are some of the ways that we were able to achieve such an impressive reduction in node modules? Well, much of it was due to upgrading old and outdated dependencies. Previously, we shipped Webpack version 4 as a default with 5 as an option. But now we've dropped support for Webpack 4, improving compatibility with modern Node.js versions, and removing many deprecated and unmaintained packages. Speaking of Webpack, up until now, the sidebar and panels of Storybook were built with Webpack, but that changed in 7.0, and now Webpack isn't included at all if you're using V. Similarly, we've upgraded MDX from version 1 to 2, improving support for React 18 and cleaning out even more old dependencies. Tom will talk a little bit more about the MDX upgrade a little later. Storybook's last major release was two and a half years ago, and a lot has changed since then. Supporting Internet Explorer is finally no longer a requirement for most developers, and modern versions of Node.js have excellent support for new JavaScript features. So by only supporting modern browsers and Node 16 and above, we're able to avoid shipping so many polyfills, which were increasing the size of our distributed code and dependencies. Another great benefit of updating and cleaning out our dependencies is that NPM Audit now reports zero potential vulnerabilities, so you can rest easy. The reason we can stop shipping Webpack for Veep projects is because of the work that Norbert and others did to change the way that the Storybook Manager is built. Now, the Manager is the Storybook UI itself. It's everything except for the preview, which is where your components are rendered. Previously, Webpack ran every time you started up Storybook to bundle the Manager and any add-ons you had configured. And we did some smart things like caching the results when we could, but the cold start time still took a while and it meant that even Veep projects had to have Webpack installed in order for Storybook to work. But now that's all been re-architected, and instead of Storybook building itself every time you start it up, it's pre-bundled before release, and that has a few benefits. The manager now has a much faster cold start time, somewhere between half a second and three seconds, depending on how many add-ons and stories you have, whereas before, that could take up to half a minute in some cases. Another benefit is that the dependencies used in the manager don't run the risk of conflicting with the ones you have installed in your app. For instance, Emotion is used for styling, and previously having multiple different versions of Emotion being installed could cause problems for some users. That's no longer a problem now with pre-bundling. And we've taken this one step further and started to pre-bundle some of the Storybook runtime that is used in the preview iframe, which saves even more time during startup. One key way of achieving faster startups is to do less work. There were a lot of improvements in version six of Storybook to make sure that stories could be lazy loaded, uh, which means only sending the files to the browser that are needed to show any given story. You could opt into this behavior in version six, but it's the default now, making it even easier to have a great experience. And if you're using Webpack, you can take it one step further with lazy compilation, so that Webpack doesn't even process files that aren't needed in order to show the current story. The success of tools like Vite and Parcel have taught us the importance of developer tooling that just works. Previously, it could be a little difficult to set up Storybook with frameworks like Create React App or SvelteKit or Next. And that config has been greatly simplified and Storybook has a new framework API, which Kyle will go into more detail on later today. Another recent change in the ecosystem has been the move from CommonJS to ES modules. In Storybook 6.5, we expected to write your config files in CommonJS and TypeScript config files only worked in some cases. Now in 7.0, Storybook allows and even encourages you to write your config files in ESM or TypeScript. Storybook has supported V since version 6.4, but up till now, users had to recreate their whole V config just for Storybook. Now Storybook will read your V config file automatically while still giving you a chance to override config if needed. Similarly, your Svelte config file will be read and used automatically now. Finally, for those of you upgrading from 6.5, we've created a number of code mods that will automatically update your code to match the new 7.0 conventions. Michael Shulman will talk about that in more detail a little later on. 
So we've been hitting the gym and we've made some big improvements to slim down Storybook 7.0. To make sure we keep that weight off, we're running benchmarks for install size, bundle size, startup time, and more on every run of our CI. By tracking those metrics, we'll be able to detect changes that hurt our performance and we'll have increased focus on further improvements going forward. We'll continue to make Storybook fast and lean while supporting the growing front-end ecosystem and pushing forward with features and capabilities found nowhere else, some of which you'll be hearing more about coming up next right here on Storybook Day.